This is the Solid Signal podcast for the week of October 30th, 2023. And this week, I find myself having a rather interesting discussion with a few people. And and so it led me back to thinking about a technology I hadn't really thought about in a long time, and one you probably haven't thought about in a long time, and you wonder why it is even still there. And that's standard definition television. Standard definition television or is what we used to call you know, television uh, 15, 20 years ago. It is the old-fashioned, you know, 480 lines of resolution, originally was an analog signal, now can be a digital signal. And this is the way we watched television for uh, over 50 years. And it's not that we didn't complain. We always wanted something better, and we got something better in the form of high-definition digital TV in the 2000s. So it's been almost a whole generation that we've been uh, enjoying clear digital signals in high definition. And high definition meaning, you know, 720 lines of resolution plus. Um, And there's a whole set of articles I've written on the Solid Signal blog about what high definition really is and how it can really vary from um, from show to show in, in a huge, huge way, not just because of the resolution, but because of other stuff like bitrate. So I'm not going to get too far into that. Really, what I want to talk about is standard definition television, why it is still there, uh, why you might actually care about it more than you think you do, and why uh, why I'm even talking about it all, why, why it's still a thing in 2023, which you would think it was not. You would think it was not. So there are going to be two cases where you're going to see a standard definition signal. The first is if you're actually looking at uh, material that originated in standard definition or is being shown on a sub-channel over the air, whether you're streaming using a fast service like Pluto TV or whether you're watching a sub-channel using an over-the-air antenna, it's possible you could be looking at a standard definition stream. All these sub-channels, which are, you, if you're not familiar with the technology, again, I, I, I would suggest going to the Solid Signal blog, blog.solidsignal.com, searching for the word sub-channel, and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff about it. But, you know, one of the things that is about, that there is about sub-channels is they're designed to really take up very little space within the digital signal. And so, you know, they they tend to be standard definition. There's nothing saying you couldn't have a high definition or even 4K subchannel, and this is being done with some of the test broadcasts for the next generation of broadcasting. But for the most part, for the most part, subchannels and standard definition go hand in hand. Subchannels are where you will find, you know, reruns of old TV shows that you really miss from your youth. And so standard definition is just perfect for that. The other place that you're going to find standard definition television, surprisingly, surprisingly, is on satellite, especially on DirecTV, which maintains a complete, well, 99% complete duplicate of of all its channels in standard definition. And, And you would think that here in 2023, they don't do that. They've stopped doing it in a lot of markets for locals, but there is no intention at the moment in stopping standard definition service of national channels. Um, And and let's talk about why. The technology is such that it really takes up very, very little space on the satellite. So in a sense, you say, okay, why not? But there is an inherent cost, obviously, in ground equipment to maintaining these channels. So yes, there has to be some financial payback for doing it. It comes in the form of these long-term contracts that DirecTV has with providers like airlines and van services and tour buses and things like that, it is much, much harder to get the high-definition signals in something really big in motion like a plane. This has uh, partially to do with the band that they are broadcast on and the way that those signals go through weather and while there's a lot more space in the KU band, which is where standard definition channels are, a lot more space than there used to be, still KU band is tend, tend to be associated mostly, mostly with standard definition 
channels while it's the KA band that's associated with high definition in 4K. There's just so much more capacity there. And it is capacity for thousands upon thousands of HD and 4K channels. Again, not the focus of this podcast. The fact is there are several hundred standard definition channels that broadcast on DirecTV. You might see them if you go through the guide, if you don't have your standard definition duplicates turned off. If you do have them turned off, you probably just don't think about them from day to day. And and you're asking yourself at this point, five, almost six minutes into this podcast, why do I care? Why is this guy rambling on about standard definition channels and why I would really care about them. Well, more and more people are going out on the water. More and more people are going out in RVs than ever before. These are habits that started during lockdown. You know, when we all just wanted to have a way to be entertained and feel safe being away from people. And RVing and boating has just gone gangbusters, just nonstop. Those two markets are going like crazy, just ever since, or going on four years. And while a lot of people are looking at solutions like Starlink for their RV or boat, they're realizing these are very, very expensive solutions that don't really work very well for streaming video. You could, depending on the plan that you're using, run into data caps, which means that maybe you have enough capacity to stream video for two weeks and not the whole month. And after that, it becomes extremely extremely expensive. So this is why people are looking at satellite systems. A satellite system is a fixed price per month, no matter how much you watch, period. And that means it can be a lot, lot less than Starlink. The cost to get in is really not that different between Starlink and and satellite TV, especially through DirecTV or DISH. And the amount of content on it that you find on satellite is is pretty darn amazing. Just hundreds of channels of live TV. Uh, if you have an internet connected receiver, if you're you know tethering that to your cell phone, you do get some ability to stream as well. But like I said, you can run into data cap issues. And the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because when it comes to RV and boat systems. Standard definition systems are still a lot, lot less expensive. You'll pay quite a bit more to get high definition service on your boat. And when it comes to uh, your RV, now if you're on dish, you'll get some high definition service on your RV with a smaller system. You absolutely will. But if you're on DirecTV, you'll get almost no high definition service on you know the smaller, less expensive RV satellite dish. This would seem like a huge problem, except for the fact that it really isn't. And why? See, there's this set of formulas that I don't tend to agree with that dictate whether or not you can even see the difference between standard definition, high definition, and 4K, depending on how big your screen is and depending on how far away you are from it. You can see various different versions of this graph if you look online. And I I tend to not agree with it. I guess it really just depends on how good your vision is. So I'm just going to tell you, you know, me. I'm going to tell you how this works for me. I find that I can't tell the difference between high definition and standard definition on a 40-inch TV if I'm more than about six and a half, seven feet away. So if the TV is smaller than that, I could be even closer. And how big is the TV going to be in your RV? In most cases, 32 inches is about the largest you're gonna find in an RV. More often, you're gonna find like 27 inches and even smaller in the RV, which means the truth is you are not going to see the difference between standard definition and high definition pretty much anywhere in your RV. It's just all going to look the same. Depending on the content you're watching, you may see those black bars on the left and right. That may be the only indication that you're watching standard definition television. The quality may look exactly the same to you. And that's 
That's an important distinction because when you're talking about a couple of thousand dollars difference between going standard definition and high definition for not being able to see any difference, well, hey, why not save the money? Why not do it that way, especially when you're talking about RVs? Because putting in an in-motion system for an RV that gets high definition can be very, very, very expensive. And in fact, it may just be too large to fit on your RV, depending on the system that you get. You're better off with standard definition signals. And I know it's really weird to say that in 2023, but this is a case where in your RVs and in your boats, you're not going to see the difference anyway. You shouldn't be paying for something that you're not going to tell the difference about. And it just makes a lot of sense. There's been a lot of confusion about people saying, oh, standard definition service on DirecTV is going away or standard definition service on DISH is going away. A lot of DISH's standard definition service already has gone away, but a lot of the nationals are still there. And they are being a little bit more aggressive with taking out uh, standard definition channels, but they're replacing with high definition channels that you can get in your RV, so you're basically okay with that. With DirecTV, like I said, they're not even talking about taking out those national standard definition channels at this point. They're not even discussing it. So it's not a problem for the next several years. It just makes sense. And folks, this is the kind of information that you're going to get when you talk to the folks at Signal Connect who sponsor this podcast and partial sponsor the Solid Signal blog, also sponsored by SolidSignal.com, which is where you can go to find this stuff in a self-service way. When you call the experts at Signal Connect at 888-233-7563, you're really going to get this kind of information that you would not get anywhere else. There's a lot of great stuff out there on user forums, and there's also a lot of confusing stuff out there on user forums. Why not talk to an expert who can help you figure out exactly what you need at no charge to you, recommend the system that is perfect for you, and then get it sent to your location, installed by a local person who we trust and we've worked with before, and the end result is you're watching television. You're getting the entertainment that you want. And throughout all of it, you're getting the customer service that you deserve. So call the experts at 888-233-7563. Like I said, standard definition surprisingly makes a lot of sense here in 2023 for RVs and boats. And if you want to know more, call us. That's about it for the Solid Signal podcast for this week. Thank you so much for listening do me a favor, like, subscribe, and leave a comment anywhere that you get this podcast. Makes me look good to my bosses. And as always, shop at solidsignal.com and call Signal Connect for anything that you need to live your best digital life. Have a great one, and I will talk to you again next week.